Hello, this is Athena Jezik, and today I have a model here, Rhiannon. And this is something that you're going to see if you're working in this field. She has type 1 diabetes, so she has a glucose monitor, an insulin pump, and also she has a heart monitor. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just make sure that the cerebral spinal fluid and the cranial system is intact. Uh, there's some other things going on with the hips, with dysplasia. So this is going to be interesting to see what we find. So I'm going to start out today by just going up to her head, and I'm going to check her cranium to make sure that the bones are in a good position. And then I'll be aligning with the spine. Cranial sacral therapy can help to get the system a little bit functioning a little bit differently when the alignment is there and things are flowing with that fluid, which is the very rich fluid in our body, which is considered to be, in many cultures, the fluid of life, the life force, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to just start by just finding the rhythm in her shoulders, because you could find it anywhere in the body. So this rhythm is, it's slow, it's not real strong, the rate isn't real high, and so the body is somewhat distressed, but it's not like too bad, I, I'm feeling the regular rhythm, I don't have to go deep into the sub-rhythm, so that's good, it's just that it's um, maybe tired a little bit from going through some healing. You know, it takes a lot of energy to heal. So I'm going to go up and just give her a cranial base release to make sure that there's a lot of relaxation in the neck. It's best for her muscles to be relaxed. And if you're doing massage therapy with her or somebody, or somebody like this, you would want to be sure that you get to the origins and insertions of the muscle and give a subtle hold on those to relax the body of the muscle, especially where there the dys dysplasia is present. And you don't want to ever push hard. It's always got to be very gentle. And I'm going to do a little bit of neck traction as well, because that's important to see if the bones are working nicely and have enough space between them so there's not any squishing of the discs. And it all feels good in her neck. Um, you can also monitor the how the fluid is flowing through the uh, spinal cord, um, or around the spinal cord, I should say, by getting a hold of that under the skull and finding and finding the uh, between the skull and the atlas you have to go deep it's mostly an energetic thing so you have to have your hands trained for that and you can feel that and when you get grasp a hold of that dural tube you can give it a little stretch and you'll feel it, it, you'll feel it stretch until it's got a tangle in it and there is a tangle, there's a little bit of stop, stopping right here, which is about right here in her body. And she had said that she does have a little scoliosis there. And that is where, so just because there's a little scoliosis, we can still, it won't necessarily correct the vertebrae with this particular technique, but it can stretch around that. There it goes, it just released. And now it's moving downward. And there's a little bit funny dancing around the sacrum, and I think that's because the sacrum might be a little bit out of alignment. But now this is a very nice stretch of the dural tube. So that's the beginning of getting it nice and in place. So I'm just going to go through some of the head movements here just to get the bones started. Once they get started to move in the right direction, I'm going to move it and let them continue to process on their own. It's really best to be able to follow them all the way through, but if you 
don't or you don't have time for that, it's okay because they will also continue to process through the 48 hours and they'll move themselves because they're heading in the right direction. It's just a little stronger. There's a little bump over there. So there was some misalignment with the frontal bone. And now it's on. The rhythm is good. And then I'll go to the parietal bones. So if you are interested in learning this technique, you can join the course that I have. There's really a lot to uh, working the body. A lot of people see it as being very simplistic. However, the more you get involved in it, the more you understand that it's, it's magical and it's amazing and awesome. But it does take some, a different approach a little bit different way of looking at everything. So now this is lifting fine. It's lifting really well. It's even. It's not bouncing around. So the parietal bones are in good position. And sphenoid. Usually there's several positions for the sphenoid to go, but I'm just going to do flexion extension and compression decompression. Okay, that's a good, nice rhythm. She's got a good rhythm there. I guess stretching out that dural tube was a... Well, wait a minute. There's a little bit of a sluggishness on the left side. It's not quite catching up with the right side. And that was in the flexion position. Now the extension is good. And there's the flexion. Okay, we're going to compress and then de and then decompress to make sure that the bones are level and separated at the sphenobasilar junction. Not really separated, separated, but where there, there's space between them and they're not jammed together. And that feels very, very level. Yeah, that's very good. And then I'm going to do a flexion extension with it decompressed. And it's much stronger. The rhythm is much stronger. So that she's done very good work so far here. Her body is really responding to this well. The temporal bones, we'll do a little flexion extension and a little rock of the the temporal rock. And so, yeah, that is all feeling very good. Oftentimes when the sphenoid bone is well balanced, then the rest of the temporal bones, everything else is also aligned. And so we have a good position here. And then we're going to do the rotation. And that's well placed. Very, I'm going to wobble it now. Take it in two different directions to make sure. I'm doing a little bit of a short version here because otherwise this can take a really long time but she is responding so well and there we go back to that that's good you know the more that we um, learn about body working you'll find that um, massage therapy is a good Thing for the muscles, but that is about all it will address. It won't address these deeper issues that go on that will help the healing process and just help the structure and all things like that. So just be mindful to begin to look at the body differently. Massage is good to relax you out and 
calm you down, but it won't give you the kind of changes that other work will do, particularly the cranial work. It's kind of like doctors, you know, they all have their specialties. Okay, so the, the ear pull is good. She's got a good stretch now of the tentorium, the fox reaver and cerebelli, but mainly it's the tentorium. And I'm just checking here, and I'm just going to check the jaw real quickly. Now, with all of this stuff and monitoring that's happening, it's, uh, this work is not going to interfere with any of that. It's not going to cause any kind of harm or be dangerous because there's very little contraindication for this work, the cranial work. Okay, and the jaw, the jaw is released a bit. The muscles are relaxed. And the, it's a little bit off. Okay, there we go. I'm just kind of correcting it right now. Yeah, there's a little bit of jumping around on the left. Okay, so that all feels real good. So I wanted to start there. And just, I like to drain the fluids a little bit because fluid is, um, needs to just get a little push, the lymphatic system. And I think when the bones start changing position that they're probably releasing a little bit of fluid because it always feels a little full. Okay, now I'm going to go down to the sacrum. We're going to see what's happening there. So I'm going to ask, like, bend your knee a little bit and then just lift up so I can get my hand to the sacrum and then pull your self back down onto the sacrum and then let that leg extend, thank you. So that's the easiest way really to get into this, especially if you have, I could have probably done it without that because she's a small person, but I'm finding that it's um, a little bit rough on me these days. So you might want to not wear yourself out by trying to lift people. Now I'm, where I am is I'm at S, L5, S1 with my fingers and the end of my hand, the palm right down here, is where the, the coccyx is. So I'm just feeling, because now we, we mentioned that she has dysplasia in the hips, so that's a whole different ball game. And probably the more aligned that the sacrum is, the easier she'll have with that whole situation, and it does feel like there is some distortion there. It could be partly because of that slight scoliosis. It's not bad. It's not really super out of position, but there is a bit of misalignment here. So I'm just um, holding this and giving a little bit of traction at the L5-S1. And that's also where I can, uh, when you get inside the L5-S1, then you can also give the dural tube a stretch from down here. As soon as you grasp hold of that dural tube, you can give it a little bit of a stretch, which is... Now, this is interesting because going up this way, there's more restriction right through here. And when we pulled from up there, I could feel a ni nice long stretch, but here, since we're closer to it, it's, um, it's stretching, but there's, it feels like it's unwinding a little bit more than what it felt like when I was farther away from this area. So it was stretching up there at the neck, all the way down. I just felt a really big change and shift in the sacrum as this dural tube unwound. It was kind of like a big hiccup. 
but it feels like the sacrum is a little bit more dropped on the left side than the right. And that's in the SI area. So the you have to manipulate your pressure back here. Sometimes you have to, uh, with this big bone, you have to use a little bit more pressure to urge it to, to change position. And a little less pressure on the other side. And then you also at the same time want a traction downward. So there's quite a few things to know to be able to be effective. It's just a process of learning. And now her sacrum is very, very, very active. It's a little more aligned right now. But it's very active. It's, it's doing what's called a therapeutic pulse, which means it doesn't know what it should do. This, the tissues just don't know what it should do because it wants to change, but it doesn't quite know where to go yet. So you feel this really active pulse going on. And you just keep holding that gently, not, not a pull. It's not a really hard pull. It's just a very slight traction that's almost, it's a little bit deeper than the skin, of course, but it's, it's like a skin stretch. Only you're, you're in there feeling the deeper structures. And I'm just going to continue to stretch that. I'm going to very gently take the hip in a little bit here at the crest to open up the SI, but I don't want to go much at that because of the dysplasia. And same with the other side, just to give a little more space in there for the sacrum to move. And the therapeutic pulsing is diminishing. And now I'm going to let go and feel that rhythm. The sacrum is, is calming down. She's got the rhythm coming back. It, it's slow to begin with. Oftentimes when the body makes a lot of changes like that, the cranial rhythm will shut off. It just turns off and that's because she's processing. We see that and that's what we monitor in the emotional work. And as soon as the rhythm turns off in emotional work, that means that you're right over the target. And that way you know if they don't want to do their work or not. So now her rhythm is strong. It's, yeah, I'm very pleased with what happened. Okay. And lift your leg and just kind of let, yep, out goes the hand and then the leg can come back down. Now I'm going to go back up and check the sphenoid bone and the rhythm at the shoulders where I began. Okay, the, uh, this rhythm, because this is what is the fulcrum, the fulcrum of the body is the um, sphenobasilar junction, so you monitor that from the sphenoid bone. And this is very, very balanced. It's uh, got a good rhythm. It's a rhythm that is, because she's so relaxed, it's, it's not necessarily a high, powerful rhythm, but it's a clean rhythm, very clean. It feels clean and clear. And the relaxation just kind of lets the, the uh, rhythm just kind of breathe for a little bit. So that's all good. And then I'm going to check the rhythm from the shoulders because that's where we first monitored it. And that rhythm is much stronger, much stronger than when we started. So overall, I would say that for the work that this does, the entire system is should feel better. So I want to thank you all so much for viewing this and
I hope you got some new perspective on things with this video. If you're interested in learning more, you can join my Subtle Alignment Technique course. Please give this video a like. Please share it with your friends. And if you want to make a comment, that's always really good. I try to answer them if it's a question. So make a comment, whatever you want to say. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for viewing, and we'll see you in the next video. I want to invite you to explore my course, The Foundations of Subtle Alignment. It is going to take you beyond the work of massage therapy. It will take you into the world of the subtle anatomy. This alignment of the subtle structures is often the root cause of chronic pain, injuries, and chronically high levels of stress hormones. These techniques offer profound benefit whether you are working on people with complex issues or not. In this course, you will learn about the subtle anatomy and a protocol for assessing and aligning the subtle structures.